All right. Now we're doing free code camp, JavaScript algorithms and data structures, basic job, pardon me, basic data structures. Check for the presence of an element with index of. All right. So since arrays can be changed or mutated at any time, there's no guarantee about where a particular piece of data will be on a given array, or if that element even still exists. Luckily, JavaScript provides us with another built-in method, the index of method, that allows us to quickly and easily check for the presence of an element on an array. So the index of method takes an element as a parameter, and when called, it returns the position or index of that element or negative one if the element does not exist on the array. Let's uh, open up index of over here, index of JavaScript. We've got the Mozilla site right here, uh, and it's gonna tell us the, sy the syntax right here. We've got uh, search element right here, and then from index. I'll show you what the from index is in just a second. So we got, for example, right here, we got let fruits be all these fruits right here. If we do fruits.index of dates, we see dates not in there, so it's gonna give us negative one. Fruits.index of oranges is gonna give us zero, one, two, all right? And then fruits.index of pears is gonna give us zero, one. But, okay, let's go through this real quick. Uh, index of dates returns negative one, of course. Index of oranges returns two. And index of pears returns one but it's the first index at which each element exists, right? So this is the first one, but we, we see pairs is right here. So if we use this from index and we say index of pairs comma from zero, one, two, from two, it'll actually give us zero, one, two, three, four, like that. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, I guess they didn't, they didn't include it for a reason, but whatever. So now you know. So index of can be incredibly useful for quickly checking for the presence of an element on an array. We have defined, they have defined a function, quick check, that takes an array and an element as arguments. We're going to modify the function using index of so that it returns true if the past element exists on the array and false if it does not. All right. So this one, we could do something like this. We could do an if statement, say if. Uh, da, 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 R dot LM uh, dot index, no, 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 R dot index of, and then we'll say LM like that, uh, is like that. What are we going to do? We'll say something like return true, otherwise return false. But that's not going to work, right? Because see, look, we've got mushrooms here and it's not in there. But so it is returning negative negative one, but it's still giving us true. Why? Because negative one is a truthy statement. So if we wanted to get that negative one to a falsy statement, we would just add one. And now it's false because uh, since it was not in there, it's negative one plus one, which equals zero. Right. And so if we changed it to squash, squash like that you'd say true but if we didn't have this in there it would say false hopefully that makes sense anyway that's so stupid and hard to understand let's change this up to something cooler because we do know how to do other things right so let's come over here and say return and what we're going to return is uh r dot index of and we'll say lm like this and if that is above if that's more than uh, negative one, it'll return true, right? And if it's not, it'll return false. So let's turn this back into some gobbledygook like that. False like that, and we know it works. So let's run the test, looks good, and submit it. All right, now we're on to iterate through all and arrays items using for loops, and we'll see you next time.